Welcome everybody to another session of The Agent Is In. Um, today we've got Nick, we've got Ula, uh, we've got a special guest here as well, Michael Boland from Sisofy, which is the creator of the Linus tool. Um, today we are gonna be talking about to, how to uh, harden your infrastructure using CF Engine and uh, Linus. So Nick, you wanna kind of take it away maybe uh, actually, maybe yeah, actually, uh, first, I think it would be nice if Michael could uh, tell us a little bit about Linus and uh, what it does, why it's good, all those things. Michael, sure. do you want to tell us a little bit about what Linus is? Yeah, sure. And uh, well, thank you uh, for your time as well. Um, yeah, uh, Linus or Linus, uh, we already talked uh, in private about it. It has uh, well, we have two different uh, ways of uh, how people say it. Um, it was meant uh, originally to be called uh, Linus, uh, but uh, if people use Linus, that's uh, fine with me as well. Uh, the project, uh, well, it, it uh, is almost 15 years old already, and it's a uh, follow-up tool I created in uh, 2007 after a few years of developing uh, RK Hunter, uh, Rootkit Hunter. Not sure if people uh, are familiar with it, but it's a, uh, a tool uh, focused on uh, malware scanning. So to, to find rootkits, uh, Trojan horses, and those kind of, uh, well, bad uh, things. Uh, after uh, yeah, a few years of uh, putting in development uh, time onto it, I actually needed uh, a tool for uh, my system administration uh, itself. We had uh, different uh, Linux and BSD systems. And well, being a security guy myself, I needed uh, an, an easier way to harden systems. And uh, hardening guides uh, existed at that time, uh, well, for many years already where you would uh, print them out, put them on your desk, and then uh, go through each part, uh, changing files, uh, killing processes that were not needed, etc. And well, doing that once is fine. Doing that twice is also fine. But if you have more systems than that, then it uh, becomes an, uh, a tedious task to, uh, to repeat. And especially with uh, well, with papers on your desk. So I thought, well, there need to be a more, well, an easier way to manage this. And uh, also, uh, system hardening is not something you do once. You really need to monitor it in some way. Uh, so I decided, well, I want a tool for that. Um, well, what you do as an open source person, you start searching on the internet and there were a few tools like uh, Tiger, uh, that's a uh, very old tool as well. Um, but it was outdated. Uh, it looked unmaintained uh, at that time. So, well, I talked with a colleague uh, actually, which was also my boss and I said, I think like RK Hunter, I can make something better. So. That's always a uh, well, scary part if you say that, because then someone will say, okay, if you think that, then go ahead and do it. So actually I started working uh, uh, on it. And um, yeah, after uh, a while the tool was uh, created. Um, and actually it, it was similar both between RK Hunter, I needed that uh, also for uh, system administrative uh, purposes because we uh, were expecting uh, some uh, system to be uh, infected and uh, yeah, the existing tools uh, gave false positives. So that's why I created RK Hunter also as an alternative to the existing tools. Uh, but uh, with uh, Linus, uh, it was uh, similar, like seeing Tiger not being maintained and also because I wanted to automate things and then and to make more of a framework uh, tool, I decided to uh, to create it. Um, 
the way it works is uh, it's actually a, a shell script, a very big uh, shell script. Uh, it, it's a combination of uh, multiple components. Uh, it has a main uh, part and it includes, uh, well, the relevant other sections. Uh, those might be uh, specific tests, but also a part where it does the operating system detection. It has an, an area um, well where it uh, uh, has functions stored. Um, and uh, well, with Nick uh, having the GitHub page uh, on screen, it might be maybe even useful to see it directly. Uh, there's an include uh, uh, directory in here. And here you see some of the components like uh, a binaries uh, component where it uh, checks uh, what kind of uh, tools you have installed. Uh, the OS uh, detection, as I mentioned, uh, which does the, the operating system detection. Uh, well, many tests. So um, yeah, they, those are included and it, uh, they are executed in a specific uh, order. Um, the tool itself is, um, well, it's sort of a progressive uh, tool in where it uh, tries to learn about the system itself based on what it can find. So that might be uh, specific configuration files. It might be processes that are running. It might be binaries stored on the system. And the more it uh, learns about the system, the more, well, things or tests will be activated later on. Um, so yeah, it tries to consume as much as possible based on uh, how a system is uh, configured. If you have a very small, let's say container or uh, a small uh, Linux image uh, with not much running on it, then uh, typically Linux will be done very quickly. And if you have many, well, many files, many log files, many uh, processes running, then it make obviously well, then it takes obviously some uh, somewhat longer. Um, a typical How often do people typically scan their systems with Linux? Uh, that uh, uh, depends uh, mainly on the uh, the purpose why people use it. Because uh, the Linux tool itself uh, can be used for uh, different uh, well different purposes. Uh, one of them is obviously uh, a one-time audit where you can say, well, I have a new system here. I became the system administrator for it. I have no idea what's running on it. Then uh, you could run it as a one-time tool to, uh, yeah, to, 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 to analyze it and then uh, see uh, where you stand. Um, but uh, especially system administrators will run it uh, more often than that. And that might be a weekly, uh, on a weekly schedule, for example, with a cron job. Uh, but typically even better is uh, just a daily scan so that you can really collect, uh, uh, well, and audit the system on a daily basis. Uh, typically also with the cron job, uh, where you can even decide that you want to uh, compare the results between, well, yesterday's scan and today's uh, scan. Um, then you have also people who actually use it uh, because it, the main purpose is auditing of the system itself. So where you try to learn uh, from uh, how a system is configured and that uh, is the input to uh, start uh, hardening your system. But actually because it's a security tool, um, you can use it in different ways. You can also use it as a penetration tester, for example where you can uh, find uh, even flaws on the system where you can see, well, it, it's running some components um, or maybe uh, yeah, a configuration weakness that you then can try to, well, abuse uh, or misuse to, uh, yeah, to, to, to come to a next step of in, in your penetration session. So it can be uh, typically it's used for, for good, obviously, but I've seen uh, uh, shared organizations that came across uh, the Linux tool uh, when it was used for, well, for malicious uh, purposes. Um, 
and I guess that's uh, with every tool, uh, the, 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 a tool like curl to download uh, files uh, can be used for good. And typically it is used for good, but obviously you can pull in malware with it uh, as well. Uh, so that doesn't make uh, yeah the tool, uh, the curl tool uh, a bad one. Um, yeah, so the tool is, uh, as I said, completely written in shell script and that makes it uh, very powerful to understand uh, how it works. Um, the tool itself has uh, different uh, ways of output. Uh, so when you run it for the first time, if you just uh, yeah, run the, the Linux command, uh, it will give you uh, some default screen output and say, well, you need to tell me what to do and typically it's a Linux audit system uh, that's uh, yeah, the most used command to start uh, the scan. Uh, it will then process uh, the configuration files. It will start uh, doing the OS uh, detection and uh, yeah, start uh, the, the first set of, uh, of tests. Um, with that, uh, it will give you directly uh, screen output unless you obviously decide to use a flag to, to make it silent, but otherwise it will uh, give you uh, uh, yeah, the, the screen output where it tells you what's it doing, well, what it found, and uh, if it's, uh, for example, uh, well, something that, that could be done, well, that could be improved, it will show you something like a warning or a suggestion. And then uh, in the end, when it completed, it will give you uh, well, a report, uh, just an, an overview of all the suggestions it has uh, in which you can improve, uh, well, the system when it comes to uh, security. Uh, another thing is it has a log file uh, because um, every uh, system is obviously different with different paths, with different libraries, uh, different binaries, different processes. Uh, but since the tool is written in shell script and even uh, it's written in POSIX uh, compliant shell script, it will um, show you, uh, uh, yeah, it, it, it will run on, well, it will run on many different uh, distributions and therefore show you those uh, spe specifics uh, of the, the scan itself. And uh, those are stored in the, well, in this file that uh, Nick is showing currently, where it uh, gives you the, the, the really the details of uh, what, well, what was it doing, what did it found, etc., uh, so that you can really dive uh, into it and uh, see uh, any specifics uh, of the scan itself. Uh, so uh, the first useful area is the screen output. Uh, the second one is this log file with uh, the, yeah, the older specifics, uh, what happened and uh, well, why it gave uh, some suggestion. And then there's a, another, um, well, resource or asset, and that's an, uh, a, a data file. Uh, it's a linus-report.dat file. And that's uh, more of a file with, uh, uh, with, with raw data uh, used for further processing. And uh, that can be done manually. So it can be useful if you want to quickly uh, find something like the running services that you can see now or something else uh, like uh, processes or users or uh, specifics regarding, uh, well, uh, a service like uh, Nginx or something else. Um, well, this file is useful for uh, automated processing. And um, uh, if you, well, are a little bit handy with tools like uh, SET and AUG, you can, uh, or GRAB, you can uh, find uh, your data very quickly. Um, the interesting part of this file is uh, that um, we, as well, we uh, in being uh, the company Cisofy, we use this file also for our uh, enterprise uh, version. Um, maybe good to know 
uh, Linus was created in 2007, so uh, long before the company exists, existed uh, or started, uh, which was 2013. And um, uh, the idea to found the company Sisify was to uh, provide uh, corporate support to uh, people using the, uh, the Linus tool. Uh, because what I found as an open source developer is that um, people uh, like open source uh, tools. They start to use it and then um, they want to get everything out of it. But, uh, well, I got a full time job at that mo moment of time uh, as well. Uh, I, I worked as a security consultant and a Unix consultant. Um, so, uh, putting in development time was challenging because you have so much spare time to invest and you need to eat and sleep and other things. So yeah, you try to make the best out of it. So after a few years uh, and, and getting people or well, people asking the question, well, uh, I, I would like to see a web interface and see other things. I decided to actually quit my job uh, and, and it just, well, from one day to the other, say, well, I'm going to quit and start a company uh, making uh, a solution around the Linus tool itself, which is then called Linus Enterprise, uh, with, uh, the, the, well, the main purpose to uh, boost the development time uh, in Linus itself. So, it, it, well, it was already a nice tool for many but to make it even better and uh, yeah, to, to keep supporting it uh, in, in a different way so that companies could get uh, more value out of the tool as well. So the big difference between Linus and Linus Enterprise is actually not that it are two different things. They actually work together. So if, uh, yeah, if you decide to become a, a, a customer, then you will still use the Linux tool like you would have done before, but you get uh, uh, yeah additional features, and those features include a web interface uh, with it, uh, all the data that's uh, well created uh, by Linux that's uh, then collected. Uh, there are uh, Linux plugins as an addition to even collect more uh, data uh, from a system. Uh, it includes obviously support, uh, etc. So it's uh, good to know that uh, those who actually become a customer, they help uh, with the ongoing development of the well, the Linux tool. Uh, at some moment in time, we also decided to um, to make a sort of a split and say, well, you have the Linux community part and you have the, 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 the Linus customer part, but the Linus tool itself is still the, the shared component that is uh, the same for both. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, I guess, uh, a, a long introduction uh, <laughs> uh, regarding that. Yeah, so. If so yeah, no, thank you for that, Michael. Um, I think we're excited to have you on. We've uh, Nick and I have had a lot of conversations with customers and people using community as well as enterprise that um, have shown interest in the the Linus tool. So glad to have you on, and thank you for that introduction. Yeah, yeah thank you. I've been using Linus for um, I guess years now. Uh, I don't remember exactly when I came across it, but I wrote a little bit of CF Engine policy to kind of you know wrap around it and and help me just like automate stuff like I typically do. Um, there's this module um, that is up on build.cfengine.com. Uh, it makes it pretty easy to, to install and, and run Linus regularly. Uh, oops, wrong tab here. So um, you can just CFBS add Linus and uh, then you can get some <clears throat> basic reporting. So we just download and use the open source component uh, of Linus and then do some uh, parsing of that report.dat file um, that we were that uh, Michael was describing. Um, but with this with this module um, works with enterprise or with community with community. Um, you just get uh, output on the command line. 
you know, about the things that were found from the, the report. And then in enterprise, of course, you get information from um, mission portal. So I brought up in uh, a small instance here where I'm running the Linus stuff. And so we can see here like inventory that's reported back. So these are all the, the list of findings um, from uh, what, what Linus found on the system. Um, let's see here, if I just grab a random one. Of course, it doesn't mean a whole lot. We have to look it up and go see like what a specific, uh, what a specific control is about. Um, I think this is something where the enterprise version of Linus will give you probably more detailed information about what something is. This one is kind of... Uh, yeah, this one is, well, some are empty and, and, and it depends a little bit indeed on the, the test itself. Sometimes when they are newer, then uh, they might be uh, uh, not uh, updated uh, yet. I guess the, the, the one with the banner, the, the yeah. B-A-N-N. -N, this one? Yeah. Here. That might be, yeah, and I saw another one. Yes, I've looked at this one a lot, right? So that's the issue. And then, you know, it tells you what it's about. And this one is about um, making sure that etsyissue.net has, you know, the right amount of legalese in the file to satisfy some lawyers. So it kind of just scans the file uh, and looks for legal type words. And it, it even says, it even says that you need to consult a legal contact person. So I'm not sure if you have one in the audience. I don't know if we have anybody <laughs> to, to look at that, but um, indeed it will trigger if you don't have enough legalese. Um, as it is here on this system where uh, it has zero legalese. Um, let's see here. I think there was, of course, one of these is, uh, let's see here. What if I just search for Linus? There we go. Let's look at this, six, three, five, four, old files in temp. So when I brought up this um, environment here, of course, this policy set was built with CFBS. So it's got master files. Uh, this temp file age module and Linus. So we can see here um, that this module inventories and manages old files in temp, which aligns nicely with this control ID for old files in temp. So 6354, we should be 6354. 6354. Of course, I don't have old files in temp. Yeah, and that makes sense. It depends a little bit on the system itself, what's running on it, and if it's left over really old files. Oh, well. Uh, I have we old files have. there. Yeah. Right? So if we look here, but, let's go look at our inventory. Oops, I just went away from it. So I had installed that uh, temp file, so we can say old files in temp. Right, and then what else do we have for inventory? You can look at the oldest file in temp or oldest timestamp in temp. All right, so these files are quite old, but I suspect that uh, perhaps these files were created um, after the last Linus scan. And let's see here, Linus. I bet that's what happened there. So yeah, you, you can grab uh, in the report file or in the log file to show the details if needed. Yeah. So this is actually yeah pulled from from that report that some of the other inventory that we pulled. So if I come and um, if I look here on the the Linux page, there's some different controls. I already know that this one runs um, daily. And it'll run if that Linus report, the Linus report.dat file doesn't exist. So uh, var log Linus report.dat. So if I just delete this file, and I do the typical policy run, 
we can see that <clears throat> it's executing the Linux system audit with the auditor of CF Engine since it's an automated scan. I'll have to wait a minute or so for this to complete its thing, and then we'll take a look to see what comes up. Um, report itself. I just keep leaving the same report over and over. Let's find control ID findings. And this is done running, looks like. And then so I'm just going to pull in the reports from that. That would normally happen within the next couple of minutes. Now, if we refresh this report, do we have 6354? Yeah. 6354. Hey, we do have it. So um, it's pretty rudimentary inf information that we've got here, you know, just inventorying back some of these uh, high level things from Linus. So pullbacks, different suggestions. Again, not super easy to read here. Uh, we're just pulling back some, some raw data, uh, probably something. Linux Enterprise can improve on quite a bit. Um, but I think one of the interesting things that we want to see here is, um, what is it that I want to see? Oh, yes. Um, building up a compliance report, right? So we've got all these findings and stuff, but this is kind of hard to read. And we're just looking at each individual host here. So. I was playing around the other day, one of the CFBS uh, features to add um, a compliance report example based on the reported Linus information. So let me go ahead and add this. So there's no, this module doesn't exist in the index. It does exist in this repository. So I'm just going to add the repository, um, this specific module uh, from that repository. So we'll add it here. And you can see it pulls in auto run and compliance report imports as dependencies of this module. So we'll go ahead and build and install. And run the policy. So what that should do is pull in a compliance report for Linus in this interface. And it might take a couple of runs before that happens. I think that, that was it. There we go, Linus compliance example report. So now we can pull up this compliance report and then and take a look at, uh, at what's going on. So we can see here all of these different um, Linus control IDs. Is that what you call them, Michael? That's what I have called them? Uh, yeah, controls. Linus controls. Uh, controls. Yeah. Or Linus controls. Yeah. All right. Um, so we can see we've got some here that are related to accounting, um, making sure that various tools are installed so that we can track what's going on in the system. These are all passing. And we've got a couple here that aren't passing. So this file 6354, 50%, right? So if we look at uh, who is and isn't passing, we can see that it's failing on the hub, which is that host that we were looking at. And it's failing because we're finding this file 6354 in this list of uh, reported IDs. So the next thing that we can do here is we can look to remediate this issue. So we have this temp file age module that we already have installed and we're already looking at uh, the inventory produced by it, the files that are there and things like that. Um, but here in the configuration, we can see that there is a class here that we can set if we'd like to enforce the age. So by default, files are considered old if they're one week or older and we can adjust some of the way that we display the time format to people. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and enforce this, which will make sure that we remove these. So if we go here and see, let's find this offending host and go visit its host info page. So we can go ahead and just define this class for this host.
run that. So what we should find here is, let's see if it works. Oh, we still have a bunch of old files here. Oh, and we see all these old files are actually being deleted by the policy now. And um, the next thing would be, you know, tomorrow, Linus is going to scan automatically because it's set up to do daily scans. But again, uh, ah, bar, log, Linus, report by that. If we remove this report, And if we run our policy again, Linus will run. And then what we should find when we go to reports, compliance, Linus compliance, and here, okay, we're not done yet. Linus is still doing his yeah, run. It's running, yeah. And then we'll also have to collect the, <clears throat> the reports back uh, into to the hub for mission portal to show. So I'll take just a minute here. Um, but then we should be able to see that uh, the compliance for this one um, ends up passing to the hub. So let's see, where are we in this run? Okay, it did that. And then within a few minutes, something like this would happen. And now we're passing. So just a, you know, just a quick example of how you can leverage some of the tools that already exist to go ahead and, you know, scan your systems, improve the hardening. You don't have to work too hard on a bunch of that stuff. Other people have already done a lot of this work. Um, and it's nice to be able to, to take advantage of that. Um, and uh, yeah, in addition from my side, uh, if you have a specific finding like uh, the Ben uh, 7126, uh, um if you want to have more details on the specific finding uh, what you can do then is run a uh, linus show details so uh, linus uh, space show space details space and then the specific uh, test uh, uh, after it so the the ben Yeah, it depends on if you have it installed as a package or a specific part. Yeah. Ah. Then it will uh, extract a specific, uh, uh, well, the, 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 the useful part from the log file so that you don't have to scroll to the log file fully. Uh, so this might help, especially if you have a few uh, of the controls that uh, yeah, were discovered that you can uh, see, well, what was tested in which specific file, uh, including, uh, well, uh, the, 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 yeah, the specifics, uh, including uh, also the uh, suggestion. Uh, you can also see hardening points in this case. This is just a collection of uh, the better you have uh, hardened the system, the, the higher the hardening value uh, or total will be. So uh, this, yeah, this might be useful to quickly uh, see more details uh, when you have a finding and uh, yeah, want to zoom into that. Yeah, um, the hardening index oops that's totally not what i wanted i didn't want all of these there by default thank you default that's just a bunch of stuff to delete let me just go add this so i wanted to add inventory do you have the hardening index here so yeah so we should be able to pull this back linus hardening index we're already inventorying Perfect. it and then we can do uh I was told by somebody that bar charts are way better than pie charts. But uh, both of my hosts here look like they're reporting in at 65. 65. So what do you think? Okay. How yeah. bad is that? 
Well, it, it might be good to mention what, what, what the hardening index is, because it's not an, uh, um, a scientific uh, model or something like that. It's just an, um, uh, a number with a scale of uh, 0 to 100 uh, to give a first impression on how well a system is hardened, especially if you never executed the tool and you come across of a system where you say, well, we you know security is important, uh, but we don't know actually what has been done to it. Then when you run uh, the Linux tool and you uh, get uh, this specific uh, hardening index value, then uh, generally, uh, well, if it's below 60, um, it's weak. So uh, some hardening may have been done, but there's definitely a lot of uh, room for improvement. Between 60 and 80, it's, well, it's, it's decent. So you, you can clearly see some things has been done. And then maybe uh, it's that high because uh, the system is not running many processes and uh, uh, the default configuration files uh, are being used and have uh, strict uh, file permissions. So th then it's, well, decent and uh, typically below 80 and higher, uh, uh, or sorry, uh, above 80, uh, 80 and higher. Uh, it's uh, fairly good uh, to, uh, yeah, to, to even outstanding. Um, it's, it's not uh, a number where you uh, should, well, you should not put too much value into that number alone, because it really depends. If you have a web server and you have a, hardening index of let's say 90, but your web uh, server, well, your, your, your Nginx or Apache has been configured very weakly. Yeah, then obviously you still have uh, a big flaw in your, uh, yeah, in your system. Uh, so you have to use it in, in the right way, especially to, uh, you can use it as a first impression number or to compare systems that you can say, well, these two systems are pretty the same, they look the same, um, and, and then you can use it to, to compare, so. Oh, great, looks like you can use it to audit Docker files as well and do local or remote scanning. Yeah, um, typically you use, a, 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 yeah, I've, maybe I forgot to explain that. Typically you uh, run the tool on the host system itself. You can do a remote scan, but in that case you need something like SSH uh, access where you actually push the tool to the uh, yeah, receiving system, run the tool, and then you can even decide to uh, remove it uh, afterwards. Uh, because it's in shell, it doesn't have uh, yeah, um, uh, normal dependencies uh, besides just, well, it needs to be, uh, or it needs to have a, a POSIX uh, compliant shell, which is uh, common for most systems. Um, and, and besides that, uh, yeah, not much is needed, uh, like uh, uh, just normal tools like wrap and awk, et cetera. Et cetera. Um, yeah, and maybe uh, I'm not sure if you have uh, some, some output uh, or if you can run uh, 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 Linus audit system uh, quickly. An interesting part, by the way, is uh, when I founded uh, the company Sysify, uh, one of the first uh, development work I did on uh, Linux is uh, simplifying things. Like uh, we had some uh, parameters uh, from the past, like uh, options and flags uh, that were not, uh, uh, well, not making uh, much sense. Like we had a minus C which was meant to start the, the, well, the check. Um, but well, one thing was simplifying things and really make it more um, command oriented. Like if you say Linus audit system, you know it's starting to audit a system or it's doing a system audit or it audits a system. So the, yeah, the, 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 the tool itself um, really got some simplification. Uh, you also see a tip uh, at the bottom, for example, uh, that's something that uh, was added as well uh, to give people uh, hints uh, on how to improve uh, things. Uh, so what how is you the process of making these 
custom profiles you, is, is it yeah come in and edit this or does enterprise like make the process of making multiple profiles and managing that a little bit easier or well typically you don't have to uh to use a profile um uh, there's a default profile which uh, has uh, just well the default values that typically will work um for example uh the, the quick mode is uh, uh activated by default um but if you don't want that uh for most of these well let's call them settings uh, you can overrule them with uh, an, an option or you can uh, uh, overrule them in a, a file which is called custom.prf uh, which is, uh, is short for profile uh, by default that file does not exist so you have to create it and then put in your uh, uh, specific settings uh, important thing is not not to copy the default profile but to really um, uh, make an, uh, uh, only put in those settings that are different from the default so that you can keep your profile uh, your custom profile very uh, clean and light so that you see in one overview what uh, yeah differences uh, you applied um, and um, for well the configuration management uh, a tool like cf engine is obviously perfect for that uh, if you say well i want on all my systems to uh, skip a particular test uh, because that can uh, happen as well if you have a finding and it has a suggestion like the banner uh, that, that we saw before and you say well i don't really care about that i want to ignore it then you can uh, uh, create the custom.prf uh, file and you can say skip uh, minus test uh, and then the equals uh, sign and then uh, the the yeah the specific test uh, after that um, and with that um, yeah here yeah, there's uh, some examples indeed um, with that, uh, you can uh, uh, tell the client uh, not to run that particular test. Uh, what you can also see here is that you can even uh, some tests, uh, and, and the SSH one is an, uh, one which tests uh, multiple settings that you say, well, the permit root login, login, for example, we really need that for some kind of business process to be running uh, uh, normally uh, and we have to uh, skip uh, this uh, specific setting on only a few systems then you can say the skip test with the test uh, the control id and then uh, with the setting uh, uh, after that uh, which is uh, uh, why there's a column uh, in between so you can really uh, yeah customize the test based on um, uh yeah your kind of uh, systems and uh, specifics uh, to it uh, and obviously uh, i would say try to minimize what you do by hand and use a tool like cf engine tool uh, to create and manage this uh, custom profile um, based on system role or based on uh, yeah what's needed uh, maybe you can have some generic uh, settings and then append uh, those things uh, needed for uh, yeah a few systems only so uh, yeah to to make your configuration and uh, tune uh, the the linux usage uh, yeah at the same time great great and then i see here there's upload options too i guess that's for linux enterprise yeah there's actually an option for uh, yeah to, to upload the linus uh, report uh, file uh, to the to the enterprise central server which then parses uh, the the data itself um yeah and uh, uh there are well uh, I, I guess uh, for, for everyone who never used linus I guess uh, using or uh, looking into the default profile will give you a lot of uh, uh, help uh, as well on, on what's possible. But also if you run uh, Linus uh, show options, for example, then uh, uh, yeah, you see the possibilities as well uh, on how you can use the tool and what's, uh, uh, yeah, what's, what's 
possible. Uh, yeah. Show, show options. Yeah. Yeah. So there are a few things. If you run, run a Linux show. then it will tell you what you can actually run. And this is one of those simplification steps uh, yeah, that we did as well. Uh, like for example, the show EOL, this uh, end of life uh, test. Uh, that one, uh, uh, <laughs> well, in this case uh, shows it's not end of life uh, yet. This has a built-in uh, small uh, database, so it uh, depends also on uh, what version you're uh, running. Um, that's also actually a good thing to mention that uh, the tool itself is uh, being updated uh, typically uh, every few months. Um, I talked about uh, with Nick about it. Uh, there's a new version coming soon, the, the Trio uh, 8, uh, most likely uh, within a week uh, from now. Um, you can install Linux uh, in different ways, and uh, that's typically also something uh, well which you can uh, do with uh, CF Engine to deploy, uh, um, for example, uh, from our repository. But you can, um, because there are no dependencies, you can download it as a tarball and just extract it and uh, yeah, uh, execute it. You can. Um, install it as a package from most Linux distributions and then the, the BSDs uh, with just your package manager. Please note that, uh, well, some uh, operating systems or, or Linux distributions have old versions in it. Debian is uh, so, yeah, uh, known for that, for example. Uh, well, yeah, you see the, the Debian uh, 12 has the latest version in this case. But uh, 11 has uh, one, uh, yeah, the Trio 2. So that's, well, uh, old. And Debian 10 is even a much older version. Um, we also have a, a, a repository, uh, which is uh, located on packages.csfi.com, uh, where you can pull in the latest uh, package version um, uh, as well. Um, so if you have uh, something like Debian, and you say, well, I really want to keep uh, or stay up to date, then I suggest uh, using uh, this uh, uh, repository uh, and add it uh, with uh, CF Engine, uh, well, to your system configurations and pull in the updates. Or if you have many systems, and uh, I guess uh, some of the attendees uh, may have, well, maybe hundreds or, or thousands of systems, then I typically suggest that you, uh, if you have an internal software repository, that you uh, sync against our repository and then um, uh, have your clients installed from your internal repository so that you can even do some, uh, yeah, software, uh, well, uh, gatekeeping so that you uh, decide wh what version you really want to deploy or that you first, if there's a new Linux version, that you first run it on a few test systems and then decide to, uh, yeah, to pull it in uh, to your internal repository server and then deploy it to uh, all systems. Because in the end, also good to mention is uh, Linux uh, does not require uh, root permissions, uh, but it's better to actually give it root permissions. Because if you have uh, hardened your system, then most likely a normal unprivileged uh, user cannot uh, actually look into some configuration files because you, well, you hardened it and uh, you prevented it from accessing uh, them. Um, so the best way is to give uh, the tool or execute it as the root user uh, via a cron job. Uh, during the night or during an, a not busy period. Um, and then it's always good uh, as well. And then I speak here as a, as a security person myself to test your software before you deploy it on, uh, well, many, many, many systems, so. Great. Great, that was uh, really informative. I super like this 
trick right here. I didn't know about, which one was this? Not show options, it was show. Yeah, show details. details. Yeah. That's really great, I like that one. Yeah, and if you want to learn more of these tricks, uh, the, the Linux show command, like if you want to know where your report is uh, located, show report. Or if you want to know your version, you run Linus show version. Or if you don't know where it's located, you show, uh, you use work there. Or if you want to know the profiles that were used, uh, because you, you may have only the default profile, then uh, show profiles. Well, in this case, you see it's only using the default profile, but if you had a custom profile, uh, then it would show up here as well. Then it would show the, the both of them. Uh, do I have to do something to tell? Oh, look at that, I picked it up. It's, it's almost like it's a smart tool. Yeah, nice. <laughs> very exciting. So yeah, going through the options, uh, the, the, the show uh, options, uh, which is, uh, yeah. Oh, I, I, yeah, I, oh, I, I meant uh, the, the Linux show without any. This uh, really gives you uh, some, some interesting uh, parts. Uh, also, how uh, things are being executed. For example, the Linux show tests, uh, because if you want to know well what, what Linux can do or for what kind of tests it has, obviously you can look into the um, uh, specific test underscore file in the include directory. But uh, there's also uh, a database uh, showing uh, these uh, tests. So if you, uh, yeah, if you really wanted to look for a specific uh, thing, then uh, this is uh, also a perfect way to uh, to filter out. Uh, and obviously, you can use uh, it in combination with grep, etc. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, maybe as an other addition. Um, well, tests are written in shell script itself. So if you well know a little bit of shell script, then you can create your own test as well. Um, and there's also the plugins. Uh, plugins have the main purpose of uh, collecting data, while a test is really something that is actually doing a test. So it really checks if you have a firewall or if you have a configuration file with the right file permissions, or if you have like we've seen uh, the, the right legalize uh, in uh, yeah, a banner file. Um, so th there's a difference between the tests and the plugins, uh, but you can uh, yeah, create your own uh, 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 test. And obviously you can also create your own uh, plugins. Uh, Do the plugins, now the plugins, when um, are they, are they limited to scanning or are there plugins that control like output format as well? Now, typically, a plugin will just test for something like which uh, processes processes are running on the system, and then mm -hmm. store that in the data file in the report uh, file, uh, or uh, which users are in the password uh, or the password password file, um, and store that, or uh, what kind of uh, settings uh, you have uh, in uh, Nginx. Uh, something like uh, that so they they just collect the data without making any assumptions or making any well suggestions and tests like these they really check for something and then they might give you uh, a hint on well to improve things or uh, some tests uh, have warnings uh, for example where they really say well because you don't have this then I'm going to give you a, a warning. And that might be, for example, with uh, vulnerable packages. So if you your package manager, um, um, the, the, well, the package manager that you have on your system, some of them uh, have the, uh, the option to uh, show you what updates are available and some have a more fine-grained option to show you which security updates are available because there are known vulnerable packages. And uh, if you run that, then um, uh, yeah, and, and and or if you run Linus and it triggers that part where it says says well, 
I found vulnerable packages, then it will give you a clear warning saying, hey, this is important enough to warrant uh, yeah, the, the warning itself. Um, so yeah, there's a, a lot to it, but uh, I guess you can, uh, uh, yeah, you have to do it recursively if you want to uh, show them all. Mm -hmm. Grab minus uh, R. So there, are, yeah, <laughs> a little bit more. Uh, yeah, so so th there's a lot to uh, uh, well, the Linux on on the first side might look like a simple tool, and it's meant to be uh, simple in use, but it has much more things uh, well hidden or available. And you might discover them easily by looking at the default profile or like the trick I, uh, we showed with the, the Linux uh, show uh, command so that you can see what's available, like the end of life test and the version uh, what you're running or the, where you include there is or where your work directory is or where your plugins are stored, uh, etc. So uh, yeah, those are some useful uh, resources, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Well, thanks a lot, everybody, for coming. I um, guess that's episode 11. Yeah, 11. Thanks, everybody, for being here.